Stay tuned. This is BuzzFeed. How do you hear me? We've got you loud and clear. How do you hear us? Uh, I think we're good. So, uh, hey, guys. Hey, Scott. Hey, Terry. I'm excited to have the chance to speak with you guys on behalf of BuzzFeed News. Now, as you know, today is a big day for NASA, and we're celebrating 50 years of Mission Control Houston, as well as uh, the 50th anniversary of the spacewalk. And a lot of firsts have happened in those 50 years, you know, the first space flight, the first spacewalk, a man on the moon, and now we have uh, the first espresso machine in space. So it sounds like you guys need uh, coffee every morning just like the rest of us. Yeah, that's been a fun thing. Um, Scott and Samantha enjoy coffee, and it, it's been uh, pretty unique to have an espresso machine. Unfortunately, we can't have it every day. There's a limited supply, and we're trying to save a few maybe for the next crew that comes up. But uh, that's definitely been a pretty cool first in space. Now, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, the taste and the smell of that? Does it taste the same, or does it smell the same as uh, down here on Earth? Yeah, I think they did a great job uh, on the machine. Uh, I guess anyone who knows about making espresso, it's pretty complicated. It has high temperatures, high pressures, and uh, and and I think they got it right. I'm not a big uh, drinker of espresso on the ground, but I've, I've had it before, and uh, it tastes pretty good. It had a little frothiness to, on the top and everything, so it's uh, it was a real treat. Now, Terry, you've been aboard the space station for several months now. Are you are you able to maintain a cultural connection with Earth as far as entertainment goes? You know, sports, m music, movies, etc. Yeah, we're in our seventh month now with uh, Anton and Samantha here, and one of the best ways that I've connected with Earth recently has been watching baseball. They the Houston will ship up usually yesterday's baseball game or occasionally if it's an early day game they'll send up a live game when we have satellite coverage which is about half the time so um, that's been a lot of fun for me at on earth I love keeping track of uh, some of my favorite teams the Orioles and the Astros and so that that's been really important to to keep in touch and we do have a we got a new TV screen there's a big uh, a big screen projector in one of our modules and usually on Saturday nights, we'll watch a movie together with the crew or we'll watch like the daily news down there on that. And so that's another good way to um, keep a part of Earth up here in space with us. And Scott, with you just being a few months into your year long stay on the space station, how do you prepare yourself emotionally and physically for being up there that long? Do you get homesick? Does your body have to uh, adjust? You know, I, I don't know if homesick's the right word, but there's certainly uh, things you miss on Earth um, when you're up here for an extended period. Uh, mostly the people that, uh, that you love, your friends, your family. Um, also things like the weather. Even though there's been, uh, you know, a lot of bad weather in Houston and Texas lately, and we certainly feel for those people and our, our thoughts are with them, um, you know, we do miss that, the rain, the wind. Uh, things like that. But for me, having lived here before for uh, about six months, I knew what to expect. So um, I'm trying to pace myself, keep things in the right perspective, and I uh, hopefully I'll be in have the pretty much the same attitude at the uh, uh, in March at the end of this flight as I do right now. Now, yeah, Scott, so you were you were talking a little bit about uh, you know Mars and how that would affect the the human body. Are there any like weird things that space uh, that you expect to happen to your body and you know a year being up there in space well there are things that we uh, we know happen and things that uh, we know the causes of them for instance the microgravity environment affects our bone mass uh, our muscle mass and it's you know for the reason that our, our bodies are very smart and they kind of recognize that up here you don't really have a need for that much bone mass and muscle mass so it kind of gets rid of it but we can mitigate those effects with exercise and so far we've been able to do that very well people coming back from long duration flights on the space station generally increase their muscle mass or and their with regards to their bone mass you know a lot of them stay the same uh, a few have increased it some have lost but we know and understand that uh... the radiation effects um, you know affect us on kind of a more cellular level with potential damage to our uh, our DNA RNA proteins things like that one of the uh, 
uh, experiments or some of the experiments that are comparing me to my brother in this so-called twin study uh, involve uh, research in that specific area. There's also effects on our immune system. And then uh, a new thing we found in the last several years is a, an effect on our vision. And we were just doing an experiment in, in the Russian segment today where we're doing, and yesterday, doing ultrasound scans on our uh, vessels in our head, our eyes, other imaging techniques while using this lower body uh, negative pressure device that the, the Russians use to readapt or to get ready to readapt to Earth. So it's the first time an American astronaut has done this uh, on the space station, me, and we had some very advanced uh, imaging uh, techniques and a very uh, interesting and sophisticated experiment going on there for the last two days to understand this issue with our eyes and how to protect against it. And uh, now our next question is from some of our BuzzFeed news readers. And one of the one of the best questions that we came across was for Terry. Uh, how much time do you spend there in the observation cupola? And what are your top three favorite views on Earth? Well, the answer to the first question is not enough time. Usually it's uh, in between activities. If you've got a couple minutes, you run down and see if there's something interesting out there and take a picture. And uh, top three is really hard to come up with. I think I need a letterman top ten here. The uh, auroras are something really amazing. There was one particular night where we had a southern aurora, and we flew basically through it and over top of it, and even farther south than the northernmost part of it. And you could see this thing dancing around and moving uh, kind of second by second as we flew over it. That was, that was truly amazing. Um, I, I kind of like sunrises and sunsets. The sunrise itself is amazing how fast it happens. And uh, the, the speed, it depends, kind of depends on if the sun's on the, off to our side or in front of us. But watching the other modules on the station go from black to bright white in just a few seconds is pretty amazing to me. And uh, a third site that I love to see is on Earth, these uh, islands with reefs, especially like the Bahamas or in the Caribbean, uh, in the Pacific Ocean. We just flew over the east coast of Africa, and there's, there's really green, blue, kind of shades of blue that I had never really seen before. And I love seeing those, those types of uh, island reefs in shallow water. is pretty amazing. But three is not enough. Um, I think a lifetime of, of looking down on creation is not enough time to, to see all this stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. And now uh, I think we're going to have to wrap this up soon. Now, Scott, one more question. Uh, we're going back to exercise and fitness. How do you guys stay in shape? Do calories burn slower or faster in space? You know, I, you know, a lot of people say they think that you you burn more calories here. Some people think less. I, it, one thing we, we, we all do is we seem to exercise more than we do on Earth. Uh, in, you know, in my case, twice a day, six days a week, uh, aerobic exercise and weightlifting. We have this great resistive exercise device that uses air cylinders and air pressure to uh, make it feel like we're actually lifting real weight. And uh, we also have a treadmill that works very well and a, uh, and a cycle ergometer or bicycle. Uh, there's also some exercise equipment on the Russian segments that the cosmonauts use. They also use our resistive exercise device, um, but it works. It really works great, and it's uh, you know really testament to the engineering team and the uh, exercise specialists we have on the ground helping us uh, protect our health on these long duration missions. Excellent, that's great. And I want to thank you guys for taking the time out of your busy day to uh, talk to BuzzFeed News, and good luck on the rest of the expedition. Thank you. It was great talking to you guys today.